Alrighty, welcome back everybody. It is here, it is the final week leading in to our third tournament of the season. Summer Showdown going down. Uh, taking a quick peek at our picks from last week. Again, we missed the first two. That was a bit rough, but then we went four for five. We missed the charge upsetting uh, Philly. You know, we didn't get a perfect prediction on our um, on our double points, but we still got the four. You know, we got two threes and a two, so really nice. Unfortunate that we missed those two. Would have gotten both of them right. I don't know about the score lines, but um, in any case, um, then looking at the West, again, we did pretty good. You know, we got um, three of them head on. Um, unfortunately, though, we did miss the double points. Uh, I, I don't know how to predict London or Atlanta this this stage to be perfectly honest with you um but in any case we are here um into the final week and we're going to see who's going to get to qualify um and make it into our tournaments um of course starting with the east as we always do we got big implications for a lot of these matches um you know several of the bottom spots in both regions still up for grabs so we have the hunters who are they're in right now. They're sitting in decent shape. Um, they got a team, though, that's right behind them in the charge. Pretty much for the East, um, Shanghai's locked in and Seoul's locked in. You know, they've had amazing starts. Three and four, could we could go anywhere with this. Right now, it is the charge at four and the hunters at three, but neither of the two are safe. Um, whoever wins this game is going to be in very good shape, uh, you know, this first match. Um, but depending on how maps roll out, they could potentially still end up at five. Um, you know, it's just gonna it's gonna depend on how you know how these last couple matches um, shake out. But in any case, between the charge and the hunters, it is a close one actually. The charge have been very improved. I like their I like their pickups a lot. Um, you know, far away has been great. Um, uh, Yveltal, who has now changed his name to Xerneas, um, the other legendary of that Pokemon generation, if you were wondering. Um, so yes, named after Pokemon both times. I actually didn't, I didn't know originally that it, it was Yveltal. Um, but yeah, it is still Yveltal who played for the Hunters for a while. Um, he has, same player, changed his um, in tag name. But in any case, I got the Hunters in this one, 3-2. to two. I think it's really competitive. Um, but although there is a very clear top two in the East, I still think that Chundu is probably number three right now. Um, you know, they had a bad loss against Shanghai, but Shanghai has looked super, super locked in this meta. So I'm not going to big hold that against the Hunters. Um, I think it's super close, as you see from the tagline. Um, but in the end, I think the Chargers are still a little, uh, they're a little more raw. They're a little more new as a team. You know, these Hunters players have been playing together for a long time now. Um, you know, and well, it would be interesting because the the Guangzhou backline is the former um, Chengdu Hunters, um, so we'll see, you know we'll see if they can get their revenge game in. But in the end, I just trust Hunters DPS a little bit more as well as Gaga on the tank. Um, moving on, we got LA Valiant taking on the Shanghai Dragons. Gonna be honest, I don't think this one's gonna be super close. You know, Valiant, man, they got up to a decent start. You know, they nearly beat Philly, but it's been a lot of downhill ever since. Like I said, this looks like Shanghai's best look of this season. Um, they, they, To me, they look at their strongest. The other two metas didn't, they didn't quite fit in for them. Um, but this is, I mean, this has kind of been it for them. They're popping off, um, you know, beating teams 3-0 left and right, and I don't think they slowed down against the Valiant. Next, you have the charge taking on the Hanjo Spark. Again, this this has the potential to be a huge one for the um, for the standings. The Spark are out right now. They're sitting at one and three. Their map differential is not good. They need to win their last two. Two and four is not going to do it for them. So we're going to find out, you know, which what's going to give between these two, the Zhao's. Um, you know, the, it's weird to say, but the Charge, you know, despite the, the difference in overall record, um, the Charge are looking a bit stronger in this meta. Um, it's a tough one for me, though, because the Spark, you know, they did play a couple of tough matchups early. They looked improved in their last few. I think this one's back and forth. Um, you know, to me, it seems like whoever whoever lose, whoever wins this match is is probably going to sneak in at that, at that four. The Spark would still have to beat the Fusion. Um, but we'll see how that goes. In the end, 
for me, I trust the charge a little more. I'm going to say that they do it in five. Um, again, this is clearly their best look of the season. Um, you know, the additions have been very nice. Um, Choi Se Wan has had really nice moments on the Genji. Um, this is, you know, this is a charge team that they're, they're inconsistent, you know, map to map. They've had some, they've had some really rough ones, um, but their matchup against, uh, Philly where they ended up taking it down in five, um, really impressed me. And I think that they're going to, um, just be a little bit better overall in the spark. I think there'll be a couple of maps that swing heavy in one direction. Um, but in the end, I see charge coming out just ahead of the spark. Then you got the hunters going up against valiant, um, so again, for hunters, you know, this would be, depending on how their charge match goes, this will either be a must win or a, okay, you know, if, if they win both, they are for sure in, you know, if they go four and two, um, they will be guaranteed, um, clinched a spot their first time, you know, this season. So I think it's a very important one for them because of that. Um, in the end, I got them taking it down. I think... I'm going to give the Valiant a map here. They have been competitive against some of the more, you know, the middle of the road teams, um, but it's still been a bit rough. You know, a lot of role swapping. Um, you know, they haven't really, they haven't really found that that real synergy. And whether that's because you know they had Dia on tank, and while his mechanics look pretty darn nice on Junker Queen, maybe it's just a synergy thing and a comms thing and just not being able to to really sync up but in any case the hunters look stronger than smeta and i trust them to take this one down and then you got the soul dynasty taking on philly fusion so i'm gonna say soul in a romp i think it's 3-0 philly have been very inconsistent and they they need this one you know they're they're in a bit of trouble um after dropping that match to charge you know they would if they lose this they'd be in a in a very tight spot um but I think they will lose this because Soul looks really, really good as well. Uh, we've seen the return of profit on support. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's really, I lose the word for a second there, but it's really, it's really telling on how good Dynasty's DPS are. You know, that they can have profit on support and Stalker and Fitz are just going to do all the work. You know, you just know they are Stalker on the um, on the Genji and then when Fitz on any kind of hit scan they need him, whether it's Sojourn or Ash um, or anything else. You know, he's been popping off. So I think Soul takes down Philly in convincing fashion. All right, double points. Again, we had a rough double points go um, last week. Can we get this one? I'm going to take Philly. Yeah, I'm going to take Philly 3-1. to one. Um, They've been a little more consistent than the Spark. Spark have looked quite out of sorts in this meta. Um, I couldn't really pinpoint why. It did, from what I've seen, there doesn't seem to be a huge gap in terms of any of their roles. Um, this is a very interesting meta because your Genji is, in a lot of ways, thrust to the forefront. Um, and they're, in a lot of ways, the most important character besides the Junker Queen. But in Overwatch 2, your tank is always your most important, if that makes sense, because you only have one of them. Um, you know, overwhelmingly in this meta, you can come back if your first death is your Sojourn. If your first death is your Genji or your Junker Queen, you do not come back. Generally, if you lose the support... You most of the time don't come back. A lot of times, though, when a team loses a brig, you'll notice that the enemy team also loses their brig within a couple of seconds, so it can equalize. It really just depends on the Junker Queen damage in the neutral, and then, you know, whether Soldiers can get picks, um, and if they can't, then it's about the, the shout and the speed boost. You know, it's, it's really about those key pieces of utility. Um, and you can just tell that there's some teams who aren't, they aren't as good as cooldown juggling. And the other teams are better, and they can wait out the cooldowns, and then they sync theirs up really well, and they they run them down. And you see really fast wipes, you know, when teams are good at executing um, that. But I think all this to say, I think Philly is a bit better at all of that than the Spark. Um, they just Hanjo, they have the talent, but the the calling and the comfortability in this meta just hasn't been there, and I don't see it miraculously just appearing in week four. So I got Philly. And then Shanghai versus Seoul. This would be a great one. I'm going to take Shanghai in four. Um, they just, they look stronger to me in this meta. They look like the strongest team. And 
could be very wrong on that. You know, we're going to see once we get to this match and tournament time, of course. Um, you know, these, barring anything absolutely wild, these two teams will be the one and two seeds. I expect them to play each other probably, probably second um, matchup, the winner's round, too. But, you know, I think it's very... Even if one of them does fall to the loser's bracket, I still think that they will face each other at some point in this tourney, um, and it's going to be amazing. But like I said, right now, I just I think Shanghai's a little bit better. But I'm very excited to watch that one, it, it, who, no matter who wins. All right, we move to the West, and we start out with a, a banger and an extremely important game. Um, if Atlanta wins, they're pretty much in. Um, that'll put them to 3-3 three and three for this tournament cycle. Um, they're in the eight spot right now. The Gladiators are out right now. They are at nine. They are one and four. However, if the Gladiators win this match three to one or three to zero, they will jump Atlanta. They will both be two and four. Gladiators will have a better map differential. If the Gladiators win in five, Gladiator they'll both be two and four. Glads will be plus one. Atlanta will be uh, plus two. So Atlanta will survive if they lose this two to three. They need to win two maps. They could still get jumped um, by Florida. Florida is one and three if they win their last two. Um, it's possible. You know, we'll see. London after losing their last two also very much so on the bubble. So essentially, for Gladiators, you know, win this and they're probably in. Um, you know, is there a chance London could still drop below them? Yes. You know, if if they go, um, if they get smacked by Toronto. Um, but you know this is this is a must win for both of these teams essentially. Atlanta, like I said, they could still lose and get in even if they lose like three to one, depending on what happens with London uh, and Florida. But you you do not want to rely on that. You do not want to rely on that going in. Uh, Boston is done and uh, Paris is done. By the way, uh, Paris is zero and four and their map differential is horrible. Uh, Boston is one and four and they have also have a very bad map differential. So those two are out of it. Um, New York, if they go win-win, they could sneak in still at 3-3, three and three, even though they have a bad map differential. Um, if we get to a point where London, Gladiators, and Atlanta are all 2-4, and four, then New York could jump them if they go 3-3. Three and three. So it's super exciting. You know, we, we have a lot of matchups that matter a lot. You know, obviously Dallas is in, San Francisco's in, uh, Vancouver, they're in at this point. Um, Houston, Washington, you know, they Toronto, good to go. You know, those are our top five teams. Um, but who, who's going to sneak into these last couple spots? It's, we'll find out. Uh, so Atlanta coming off a nice victory, a must win against Spitfire. They won three to one. They look like they're coming along in this meta, you know, speedily playing pretty darn good. Um, they still don't look amazing in this meta, but neither do gladiators. Um, they, you know, they won their last match three Oh, they played Paris. It's the worst team in the league. So, you know, and also a new roster. So, it's hard to really, you know, just say that, oh, Gladiators are back. Uh, one thing to note, they did have Space back in instead of Reiner. Um, and if you remember last time I talked about, like, you know, Reiner might be one of the problems. It's, you know, it's him or the supports um, that someone's going on because he was going down early in a lot, a lot of fights. So they did look improved with Space, but against a significantly better team this week, how do they fare? <sighs> Call me a homer. I think Gladiators do it. I think they do it in th four. I think they do just enough to jump Atlanta. They've just they've been a lot better than Atlanta all season, and I know it's a different meta, but they're to me they're on pretty even ground skill wise in this in this meta. And I just I trust Gladiators a little more clutch time. You know they've had a really good history against Atlanta. It's the under difference, I believe. I believe in the you know the coaching staff. Seems like they've made really good adjustments to space in. Uh, Happy feels a little more comfortable on the roster now. Um, you know, and we know how good Kevster is on the Genji. Pretty much, you know, stop Kai from going nuts, and their Gladiators will probably be better in the neutral. But, you know, if Kai pops off, you know, and really starts to, you know, take ahead before a lot of these fights, you know, Atlanta could definitely win this series. It's going to go either way, but I'm going to trust the team that's gone back-to-back. Um, over a team that has performed well but hasn't quite made it uh, over the hump this season. Next, you got Atlanta. Atlanta, wow. Nope, just did that one. New York versus Paris. So, like I said, must wins for New York. They got to win these two. Paris, 
again, they're, this tournament cycle's over for them. But with the new roster, you know, you got to start making confidence, got to start getting victories. Um, and I do think that they're, they've looked improved with, um, you know, with some of the new subs in. Um, Rack Attack, you know, pretty solid on the, uh, on the brig. Uh, Malthal as well, you know, I think is a really nice player. Um, so I'm excited to see some of those guys pop off. But I like New York in this one. I think they take it 3-1. to one. Going to be a little back and forth. New York, you know, a lot of sloppiness as a team. But Paris, since, you know, they don't have too much game time together, this is also a team that's a little sloppy. And when New York plays teams that aren't super crisp, it's really good for them because they have the individual pop-off ability of Yaki on the Genji Um Obviously, a guy who's been considered for MVP in the past, even though he's never really had too much team success. You know, his his mechanical prowess just can't be um, understated, really. It can't be overstated. Um, but in any case, I got, I got them taking down Paris 3-1. to one. Um, it, This one could get interesting. You know, New York has lost these kind of ones before. They are the team that gave Paris their first victory of the season um, a stage ago. So we'll see. But I do just trust New York enough to get this victory. And then match of the week, I think, just in terms of gameplay-wise. Obviously, some of the other matchups are more exciting for, you know, who's in or out. Um, but just in terms of the best two teams, this is it. San Francisco and Dallas. Um, you know, gone back and forth in this one a few times. You know, these are two of the top, obviously, you know, teams in the West. We're going to see how it plays out when we actually get to tournament time. I got San Francisco to keep the streak alive. We're going to say it goes to five. Just for fun, you know, hopefully for maximum excitement. But I think San Francisco keeps their undefeated uh, regular season alive in a close one. If they do, and if the next you know cycle isn't just really bad for them, they could they could very well go 24-0, and at least in the regular season this year. Will come with tournament victories? Who knows? Um, but they, they just look a little better all around. Um... Dallas is interesting just because of their Genji situation. You know, they, they went back to Doha. Feels like they've played him against some of the weaker teams. But, and because Sparkle has, he has so many moments of popping off in the past, especially on Genji. You know, he's got all these crazy moments back when he was on Paris, you know, up until now, of course. But Doha is definitely underrated as a Genji. He's really, really, really good. Different style than Sparkle. But man, man, does he have impact. Like, man, does he not get picked. It's just, it's wild. Sparkle obviously has the pop-off moments. He's got the huge fandom because he's got this huge, you know, personality. And he's super fun to watch. Um, but people are just, because of it, people are sleeping on Doha. So I'm very curious to see who they run out. If I had to guess, I would say it's going to be Sparkle. But we will see. Um, the only thing I do know for sure is it's going to be crazy banger of a match uh, but in the end like i said i like san francisco just a little more you got florida mayhem who like i said it's in front of them they're only one and three but they have paris and new york super beatable teams so i will take florida in this one i'm gonna say 3-0 i haven't picked enough 3-0s you know we started to do a couple more last week and it worked out pretty well in our favor so i got florida taking it down just better right now you know i Next stage, I truly hope, is a good one for Paris. Um, I, It feels like I can see you know, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You can see some things start to work out for them. But for right now, you know, even a team like Florida who has struggled a bit in this um, stage, I think they're still good enough to get over the hump in pretty much every map against Paris. Houston versus Washington. Again, <sighs> I know this is kind of my go-to phrase, but, like, this is interesting because Washington coming off a huge victory that basically clinched them, you know, make, getting getting in, um, you know, putting themselves to 3-2 and two, um, for this stage. I think Houston's a better team, though. I'm going to say 3-1. to one. We're going to see a bit of back and forth. But Dante, really solid on the Junker Queen. Lep has been a has been a great addition. You know, I know people were making a lot of noise about, you know, Pelican. You know, is he going to be traded now? You know, Piggy, you know, his best friends in the world, you know, is off the team now. He was super sad about it. You know, he, he tweeted it out. You know, we all know that situation. But he still played really, really well. And, you know, the comp, their combination at DPS, it's just... 
it feels like a great meta for both of their DPS. And I feel like there aren't a ton of teams that can say that right now, where they have their both of their DPS is kind of popping off concurrently. You know, it's a lot of like, okay, we really rely on our Sojourn, you know, when our Genji just kind of struggles at times. Or, okay, our Genji's really popping off, but our Sojourn does lose, you know, 60-70% of the Sojourn 1v1s. Um, you know, Houston, both of them really, really solid. And, you know, we already know how good the rest of the team is, so... Um, well, it's pretty close. You know, Washington has impressed me this stage. You know, going to the just compressing down to that five man roster, man. Assassin's just been a killer. He's, God, the, yeah, Assassin's been a killer. Wow. But in any case, he's been insanely good on the Genji. You know, bit of a redemption story. He hasn't made too much noise in the last couple of years. You know, hasn't really quite found his his stride with Washington. But now that, you know, he's in every match. They only have five players. You know what their lineup's going to be. You know, there is a, there is an absolute, um, you know, there has to be a good feeling as a player, you know, when you know that. You can just get into a rhythm, you know, you're not going to get pulled in map to map, you know, you might have a two weeks where you just don't play at all, you know, you're going to be there and you've got to perfect this role. And, you know, speaking of perfecting the role, Decay, man, he's going to at least give him a map. That's why I give him one, because, man, he's just, he's, he's insane. You know, I think... You could make a, you could have a very interesting conversation about somebody and a great debate. Who is a better solo carry in the league, Yaki or Decay? Because these guys just, the amount of pop off moments they have is ridiculous. But in any case, I got Houston taking that one down. Boston Uprising, Vancouver Titans. Let's go, Vancouver. The redemption story is here. Sorry, Boston. They just, they don't win with Punk out, man. And I know Mag is really good on the Junker Queen. I'm pretty sure he's probably better than Punk. But just look at look at the split. It's like 51% win rate with Punk in. And it's like 31 without him. If that. It's, you just you can't go for that when it's so skewed one way or the other. Just It doesn't feel like the same Boston team. Punk feels like such a critical member of the team. And it just hasn't been a great meta for them. It obviously has been a great meta for Vancouver. Went from zero wins. All of a sudden, they got three. Uh, pretty cool to see. I think they get another one. Then Toronto versus London. London desperately needing to win this. Uh, you know, it's a three and three. They'll, they'll probably make it in. If not, all of a sudden, you know, all this momentum they were building last stage and the pretty good start this day and f falling to pieces. So we'll see what happens in it. I got Toronto, though. They've been really good. Toronto is that team that a lot of people are sleeping on. Um, you know, this is a top four team in the West, 100%. And I'm very curious to see them match up because it seems like they match up with Dallas every time uh, in the playoffs and lose immediately. But they're going to have a better seed. You know, this, this could be, after making both tournaments, being two and done in both of them, this could be Toronto's time to make a little run in a tournament. And I think they're going to, you know, rev up and, you know, get a lot of momentum going in with a nice victory against London. London just, when they're outside of control maps, control maps, they've been great. Outside of that, it's just, it's not there. You know, Sparker has had a really nice season, but he's struggled the last few weeks. I'm gonna be honest, it's it's been a little bit of a struggle for him. Um, you know, the back line getting picked a lot too, you know, Hottie, Hottie's looks solid on the Junker Queen, but he's, he's had some moments and I think you could just kind of tell, you know, it's just, it's not Ryan. It's just not Ryan for him, you know, best Ryan in the world, but not best Junker Queen. Um, in any case, New York versus Florida and depending on how the matches swing out, this could be massive. You know, this could be, it, it could be. This is the match that if New York wins, they're in. Or, you know, like if Florida wins, they're in. And, like, Atlanta's out. Or Gladiators are out. Or, you know, it's... We have no idea what's going to happen. Obviously, we'll have a really good sense of it when we get to the match. You know, we're, we'll know all the scenarios. Um, so, I hope that we come into this one with a ton, um, you know, to, to go off of. Because it's going to be, you know, I feel like this hasn't really happened before. You know, where it's the last, very last match of the tourney, like the pre-tourney qualifiers. And it could be huge for two or, you know, both teams involved and maybe a third team, you know, that's just watching has to kind of just have their eyes glued to the screen and figure out what the heck's going on. But in the end, 
I think it goes to five. Got to build the suspense. I like Florida in this one. I think they get to three and three, and I think that they sneak in. It's it's right there. It's winnable. You know, their their problems have been from you know punching up. They haven't been able to you know they like to use that phrase a lot. You know, punching up. They haven't been able to take down you know one of those teams above them, whether it's San Francisco, whether it's Dallas, whether it's Atlanta, you know, Gladiators, Houston, you know. Whatever it is, they've been able to beat, you know, your New Yorks, your Boston, Vancouver, Paris, um, you know, Washington sometimes. They haven't been able to do it against the cream of the crop, but they don't have to this time. Paris and New York have struggled mightily. They have one win this stage combined. So, it's right there for the taking, and I just find it really hard to believe that Florida won't get the wins in both of these matches um, and make their way, you know, maybe a seven or eight, you know, we'll, again, we'll see how it shakes out, but I think they're going to sneak their way into the tourney, which is going to be bad news for one of these teams over here, whether it's, you know, who knows who it is. Maybe it's Paris, <laughs> maybe Paris wins both, or it might be bad news for London or Atlanta, you know, we'll, we'll find out. But in any case, those are the pickums for this week. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, you know, which, which teams are going to sneak in. To the playoffs because like I said there's a whole lot of moving that could go on in both in both regions um, but other than that we will wrap up the video for today as always thank you very much for watching I hope you have yourselves a wonderful weekend as we get into September man the time has flown by but in any case hope you guys are able to go out and watch a bunch of overwatch league this weekend good luck to your teams and as always, we'll see you.